Hello, welcome back. We are building a movie app with best coding practices and tools out there. In previous article, data source episode, I have explained how to create data source and how to make API calls. In this video, I will show you how you can create repositories and use cases to separate data layer with UI layer by introducing domain layer with the help of abstraction. So what is the problem with only having data sources and not having repositories and use cases? You have seen in previous video that we are calling data source from main.dart, which is your UI layer. In long run, this is not right and certainly needs a layer in between. Also, what this does is, it tightly couples the UI layer with API responses, which can change over the time and you will end up making changes to the data layer as well as to the UI layer. So the solution will be, we will create repositories in domain layer and they will make decisions to fetch data either from remote data source or local data source. We will also create use cases, basically one use case for one API or one feature. We will also create common error classes which will be returned from repository layer and used by the UI layer. I will show you how you can use Dart's plugin to reduce some of the boilerplate code by dealing with common error messages and also clean up some logic written in the repository. Well, a lot being said, let's get into action. Create an abstract repository. In domain slash repositories folder, create a file movie underscore repository dot Dart. In that file, create an abstract class movie repository. This movie repository will have a single method to return future of list of movies. The name of this method is get trending. Now let's implement the repository. In data slash repositories folder, create a file movie underscore repository underscore impn dot dot. Underscore IMPL is generally a tendency to add after the abstract class name so that it, it is like a implementation file. Now create a class movie repository IMPL that extends movie repository. In this class, you will need remote data source to make the API calls that we discussed in the previous video. Additionally, you can have local data source as well that will fetch data from local DB when required. A constructor with the remote data source as its parameter. Since you have extended this class from abstract class, you will implement the methods also. Notice, you can change the movie entity to movie model in the implementation to separate the layers. Also, add async in the function definition. In try catch block, you will make API calls to handle any error that is thrown by the API. And last, fetch the trending movies and return them. Now that we have given the implementation of our get trending method, let's call the method. Open main.dart and create instance of movie repository and call the get trending method. You already have API client and movie remote data source from our previous video. After doing this, run the app. This will work as it worked before when we use the data source. But doing so will not be scalable. Your UI will have to decide which repository to call to perform certain action. And sometimes it can be two or three calls to perform certain action. So UI will have to decide to make those calls and UI will always have too many widgets to deal with. So putting this logic in UI is not a good idea. That's why we will have use cases to simplify code at the UI layer. As I mentioned in the pilot video, use cases are the features that the app will work on like fetching popular movies, 
ट्रेंडिंग मूवीज मूवी डिटेल्स एटसेट्रा यूज केसेस आर सिंपल क्लासेस दैट डायरेक्टली पास द इनपुट पैरामीटर टू फेच डिटेल्स फ्रॉम द रिपोजिटरी यूज केस विल डायरेक्टली इंटरेक्ट विद द ब्लॉक्स लेट्स क्रिएट अ यूज केस फाइल इन डोमेन स्लैश यूज केसेस फोल्डर क्रिएट अ फाइल गेट अंडर स्कोर ट्रेंडिंग डॉट डार्क क्रिएट अ क्लास देयर नेम्ड गेट ट्रेंडिंग This class will accept movie repository as the final variable. Then you will create a constructor that will have this movie repository as its sole parameter. Call method is already present in all the Dart objects, so creating a method with call name allows you to call this method just with the instance of the class. We will see this in just a moment. You will call get trending method from repository here. This returns the list of movies. Open main dot dot, and this time instead of calling get trending from repository, instantiate get trending use case class with movie repository as its parameter. Then simply call the instance of get trending. When you run. There absolutely no difference in the output. What will happen when instead of proper list of movies, the API call has returned with error? As you recall from the call in movie repository implementation, I returned null in case of exception. There are two problems with this approach. First, to show an UI based on null, you will have to check null values wherever you call the use case. This will be tedious when the app grows. Second, there will be only two possibilities of use case to return: either list of movie entity or a null. With null, you can only show one generic message to the UI. So. How you will show different messages to the UI based on the type of error from UI? Let's look into that. Use Dart's plugin. This plugin is awesome, and at first it is hard to understand, but there is very simple underlying concept: return left when error, right when success. Left and right are object holders. Let's add Dart's dependency in perfect.yml. Open perfect.yml and add Dart's with version 0.9.1. Run pub get command to update the dependencies. Now, update movie repository. Open movie underscore repository dot Dart. Change the dependency of getting get trending method to return either type. With left as app error and right as list of movie entity. Now, what is app error? App error is a class that just holds an error message. In domain slash entities folder, create a file app underscore error dot art. Create a class app error and extend it with equitable. This class will have a single field which is called message that will hold any error message. Second, you will override props method to hold the message if required to compare at a later stage. Let's get back to the repositories. We have updated the declaration of get trending method in the abstract class. So By this time, implementation of movie repository has errors. Let's correct them by updating the signature. Update the method signature same as the movie repositories, and again change movie entity to movie model to maintain the level of abstraction. When API has returned with success, wrap the response with the right. In this case, wrap movies in the right. In case of exception, you can return app error with wrapping with left.
last thing before we run this is update the use cases as well. You only have to change the signature of get trending's call method. Open main.dart and read the response of get trending. As you will read the response of a future returning method, you need to write await. Also, add async to the main function. Create a final variable to hold the response of get trending's call method. Use fold operator to get either of the left or right value. When it's an error, left will be called and prints the messages. When it's a success, right will be called and prints the movies. Since the darts plugin also contains state class, you will have error using it within a file having a stateful widget. Now this is not a problem because in future you will call use cases from blocks only and not from any stateful widget. As in our last video, we had created three more methods in the data source. Let's create use cases for all of them and methods to repositories as well. Open movie underscore repository dot dot and add three more methods for popular, playing now and coming soon movies. Now open movie re underscore repository underscore impl dot dot and overwrite the three methods. The other three methods are carbon copy of the get trending method. Only change will be what method they will invoke from the data source. And in this case, it's no brainer because names of the methods in data source and repository are same. You can change what message to return in case of error in each of these methods. Duplicate the get trending use case three times and name them get popular, get playing now, and get coming soon. In call method, call the respective methods from the repository. For get popular, call get popular. For get coming soon, call get coming soon. For get playing now, call get playing now. Imagine you are the sole developer in this project and you know everything about how to create use case and what does the call method in use case does. But months later or years later, another couple of developers join you and they want to create use case. Will they remember to make call method in the use case? Probably not. They could end up creating a method with a different name and they start calling the method instead in the blocks. This will bring two different set of ways for implementing exact same thing in the single code base. This is not good for the code consistency in a long term. In domain slash use cases folder, create a file use case dot dot. Create an abstract class use case. Use case class takes two generics. Type that says what will be the success response type and parents that says what are the parameters to make api calls you can relate this signature as it is same as get trendings except that now it is generic for any returned object and any type of parameter this type of code is very important in bigger projects for maintainability it is difficult to future proof code with assumptions so it might be hard for you to completely understand the things that I am doing right now. Let me explain them with the help of examples. Till now, we have created four use cases, all returning list of movie entity. But in future, you will return movie detail, 
or list of cast entity or something else. So specifying in the use case definition itself what it will be returning will be good for us. Till now we have called APIs without any extra parameter other than the TMDB API key. But again in future you will search movies by query text or call the movie detail API with movie ID. Then at that time you will require the params as well. For calling APIs with params, you will create separate classes to hold the parameters for APIs that require query parameters. For those APIs that don't require query parameters, we will create no params class. In domain slash entities folder, create a file no underscore params.dart. Create a class no params extending equitable and don't give any field in that. It suggests that this does not have any parameters. Now you will need to update the use cases. Extend all the use cases with the newly created use case class. Define the type that get trending use case will return and parameters that it takes if any add override annotation as now it is declared in parent use case class the call method now takes in no params as explained before this will change based on the type of api call being made repeat these steps for the other three use cases absolutely no brainer in that Now you can try running after making these changes. Absolutely nothing will change as far as the output is concerned. But you need to now change the get trending method in main.dart to get trending with no params. This was all about creating repositories and use cases. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you in learning something or other, then it would be great if you can like the video. I will love to hear back from you. Also, if you are new to my channel, do subscribe and toggle on the notifications so you will not miss on the future videos in this series. See you in the next video.